this drink. It's good. Another. Huh? What are you doing in my swamp? Hello everybody, this is Ogreboy, and I'm going to be doing my review for the 2011 movie Thor. So, <clears throat> um, this movie is directed by Kenneth Branagh, and uh, in this movie Thor, uh, the God of Thunder, is about to become ki uh, King of Asgard, and uh, he, uh, during his ceremony, some frost giants appear, and uh, and run the ceremony so later that night Thor even though he was told by Odin to leave it alone and to not mess with anything uh, gets uh, Lady Sif and the Warriors 3 and his brother Loki to go with him to Jotunheim to fight the, to start a war with Frost Giants and uh, because of his actions after the uh, they get back, they're barely saved by Odin, he, he, uh, banishes Thor to Earth, and, uh, and while they were on Jotunheim, Loki finds out that he is actually a frost giant that was taken in by Odin during the, their big war, and Odin was planning on trying to bring peace between Asgard and, the, and Jotunheim, uh, through Loki, and, everything but Loki of course didn't know this he was it was kept a secret all of his life so of course he's upset and uh, Odin falls into a deep sleep and Loki is planning on trying to take over Asgard and everything and while Thor's away uh, he's trying to set it up to make it look like he's saved Asgard from Jotunheim and is, is becoming the new king and eventually Thor uh, finds out after spending some time with scientist Jane Foster and trying to get his powers back he or, or he finally gets his powers back uh, during the big battle between these two after he finally becomes worthy of being Thor again and when he when he does uh, he, he is able to return to Asgard and face off with his brother again uh, th this movie is a lot of fun. I, I've always loved the first Thor movie. I, I never have understood the hate that this one gets. It does have some. I do have a few issues with it, but I've I've always really liked the story and stuff. I love uh, the fish out of water aspect of it, with Thor being banished on Earth and stuff. Although well, most of the stuff with Thor is some of the most boring parts of the movie. It, his chemistry with uh, not, uh, with uh, Jane Foster is just not super great um but i will say that the cast in here are all pretty good especially chris hemsworth and uh especially especially tom hiddleston as loki he just steals a show whenever he's on screen and this movie is more good because of loki than it is thor because thor is kind of unlikable at first in this movie he's kind of cocky and arrogant and stuff and uh he kind of kind of learns learns the error of his ways throughout the movie and I love that I love his character arc in this movie and everything and I love uh, the a lot of the stuff on Asgard I love the characters that are on there especially like I said Loki I love Odin and uh, Heimdall is really cool uh, Idris Elba just does a really great job playing him although I've always felt like Heimdall was underused in this trilogy they make him out like he's a much bigger character in, in in the later movies than he really was because he doesn't except for Ragnarok he didn't really have a huge part in these other movies he's more just a smaller role especially in this one I, I wish we would have gotten more with Heimdall he's a lovable character and stuff I just wish we got more of him um, <clears throat> and everything and I think that the supporting characters when they're on Earth are okay Dr. Eric Selvig is fine uh, he's uh, played by uh, uh, Stalin Skarsgård, and he does a pretty good job playing him. He's fine, and Darcy, uh, who's played by, uh, what's her name from Two Broke Girls, uh, uh, Kat Dennings. She, she's pretty good, too. I don't think she's near as annoying as everybody likes to make her out to be. 
and everything. She's kind of a comic relief, but she's not she's not really super funny or anything. But she's not a not this overly obnoxious character in this one anyway. I think she was a little more annoying in the Dark World, if I remember right. But she gets better in One Division and uh, and everything. So, uh, but I think that. All of the cast are pretty good in here, and Natalie Portman, I think this is her best performance as Jane Foster. This is the only one where she, out of, or is one of her best, because actually Thor Love and Thunder, she was a lot better in that one too, but I actually like her in this one more than Love and Thunder, um, but uh, she really phoned it in in the next movie, which I'll talk about that when I get to it in a few weeks, but uh, this one is, she's she's good in here but she's not super great and her chemistry with Chris Hemsworth is absolutely horrible in all three movies that they are in together um, and everything and this one is it, it just it feels forced their romance feels forced the way the writing is and everything it's not really believable that they would just want to be together that fast and they didn't have good enough chemistry to make it believable and everything so that's one of the things I didn't really care for in the movie and uh, the other thing I didn't really like is the CGI is pretty bad. There, there are parts in here where, uh, especially like when you see the Frost Giants and stuff, they look like they came straight out of a PS3 game. Like the CGI is just really bad. It didn't, it didn't look very good when it when it first came out, and it it still doesn't doesn't look very good. It definitely doesn't hold up at all. Um, but. I can overlook the CGI because of how good the story is, uh, how much I'm immersed into the characters and everything in the world building that this movie does with Asgard and kind of introducing us to Asgard is still a lot of fun and everything. And uh, I get they, they really couldn't do a lot of stuff that they did in this movie without CGI, but it would have looked a lot better with practical if they could have done it. Um, but I think that, that this movie is still a lot of fun. and. Uh, despite its flaws, it's still a really entertaining movie. It's not one of the very best MCU movies, but it's definitely not one of the worst either, and it, it's one that I always have a good time with. And I always forget how much I like it too when I watch it. So, um, but yeah, and I, uh, Patrick Doyle's score is really pretty decent. It's not anything super gr like super memorable or anything, but it it fits this movie really well, and it kind of has that that grandeur scale to it that helps make it feel like 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 Asgard is like a much bigger world and majestical world and stuff I love like the, the score and stuff in those scenes and it, it, it has some good good moments with the score but it's not like anything super memorable but and I will say Kenneth Branagh's directing is really good I, I've seen him do other movies where his directing is a lot better but this one is still pretty good he does these really weird Dutch angles at really weird parts of the movie that don't really make sense it, that part was kind of weird too but um, but yeah so all in all I think Thor is a, a fun fish out of water story it, it's a uh, really entertaining movie, a good introduction to these characters, and uh, it's not a super, one of the super best movies in the MCU or anything, but it, it's a fun time, and I always enjoy it for what it is, so I'd say I'd give it an 8 out of 10. So, anyway, let me know in the comments what you think of Thor, and I hope you enjoyed this video, and have a good day, everybody.